Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. What does he do? He pretends to be a Republican. <laughs> Rarely in the history of American politics has one man been so vilified. I'm not going to pay for that wall. He should pay for it. Prominent figures at home and abroad have queued up to heap abuse on him. He's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. And Trump is loving every minute. Is it fun to be at a Trump rally? Is this fun? Right? He's the Teflon Dom. The more he's attacked, the stronger he becomes. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? He's got the strength, he's got the balls to do what needs to be done. Now he has Hillary Clinton in his sights. He's encouraging violence and chaos to get votes. Never before has so divisive a figure come so close to power. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Boom, boom. The mood in these elections is darkening. And America is waking up to an extraordinary proposition that Donald Trump may well be their next president. USA! 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 Boca Raton, Florida two days to go before the crucial primary here, and I'm pursuing a giant penis with a Donald Trump mask across a lawn. Get him out of here! Can we vote for Donald Trump? This is what we're trying to stop, this kind of BS attitude. What the hell is this? This is your protest? Just when I thought that the race to become the next American president couldn't get any more bizarre. What is this? This is a dick and balls from the Democratic Party, everyone. For Donald Trump's supporters, his bid for the presidency is no laughing matter. Trump is his own man, he's, he's funding his own campaign, and he really doesn't need to do this, he's doing this for the American yeah. people. If he doesn't become the nominee for some reason... If there's You're gonna a, have a revolution. Yeah. You're gonna have a revolution. Do you actually mean that? I hope so. I was last in the US two months ago, before voting began in the state primaries, that determine who become the party's candidates. Oh, we love you, we love you! I discovered that Trump had tapped into a deep well of largely white working class anger. Anger at a system that they felt had betrayed them. We have to find out what the hell is going on. We have to do it. The question was whether Trump would be able to convert this anger into votes. Early news reports like this were startlingly accurate. The New Hampshire primary. Polls have just closed in New Hampshire, the nation's first primary. ABC News projects that Donald Trump will win, and it's looking like a decisive victory. Trump quickly surged into a strong lead. We won the evangelicals. We won with young. We won with old. We won with highly educated. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. In a bad-tempered debate on CNN, his opponents struggled to get a hearing. Donald, relax. Go ahead. I'm relaxed. <laughs> You're the basket board. case. Go ahead. Donald. Go ahead. Don't get nervous. My, Go ahead. My, my <laughs> name I promise is, you, my Donald, there's nothing about I've you that, you. that I, makes I, anyone I've nervous. You know, people so are badly actually you. watching I wanna, this. I, I, I don't okay. know what's happening. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, if I'm going to ask that my time not be deducted when you tell me. In desperation, they try to take him on at his own game. He's always calling me Little Marco. And I'll admit, the guy, he's taller than me, he's like 6'2", which is why I don't understand why his hands are the size of someone who's 5'2". Have you seen his hands? They're like this. And you know what they say about men with small hands? In a pantomime debate on Fox, Trump hit back. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Right. Okay. 
It's extraordinary. The reduced level of debate. Excuse me, I think I'm talking. I mean, my God, it's like you're in the cafeteria in seventh grade. It's a food fight. But slapstick like this suits Trump perfectly. We got a lot of fun up here tonight, I have to tell you. <laughs> Moving on. Not only is the level of debate plummeting, the atmosphere on the campaign trail has become tense and toxic. Are you from Mexico? Are you from Mexico? Huh? Are you from Mexico? And Trump stokes the tensions. All right, get him out. Get him out. And we're not allowed, you know, the guards are very gentle with him. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing, like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. But if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of him, would you? Seriously. Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. Out, 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 out. This punch was widely reported. The perpetrator's sinister comment afterwards, less so. Deserved it. The next time we see him, we might have to kill him. By the time the Trump bandwagon has reached Chicago, he's facing mass protests. Inside the hall, cameras capture scenes of shocking violence. Protesters succeed in forcing the cancellation of Trump's rally. I will call and the following day in Ohio, a protester almost gets to Trump himself. It worries me as an observer of this country that you've got these sort of passions on both sides that have nowhere obvious to go. Uh, it ought to worry anybody. What we saw in Chicago recently was just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming because you've got both sides, uh, both the uh, anti-immigrant Trump supporters and uh, many minority groups who feel very threatened by Trump at a high level of agitation and we're months from the convention, much less the general election. With tensions running high ahead of the key Florida primary, I find Trump's security men paranoid about protesters. As far as we're concerned, the intelligence we have, we're not going to allow this group of people in. Anybody in this circle that we observe planning any sort of protest, you're not allowed on the property. Can you point out who in this group is not allowed in? Specific people. We need to know who is not allowed in. At this point, we're going to go with everybody here in this circle. And is this racial discrimination? Real. It would yeah. seem like it. Or is it just because you were protesters? What, what do you reckon? I don't know. The white person that said he was a protester went in. So what does this tell you about the state of America today? <laughs> the state of America today. Oh, good question. Come on. The state of America today, it makes me feel like we haven't progressed much past the water hoses and the dogs. It makes me feel like we haven't got very far from that. And that's the America that Trump wants to make great again. Hello? You're not going to answer my question? Very basic question? Well, there you go. So things have definitely changed since I was here a few months ago. A lot more tension. I mean, to actually see people getting thrown out of rallies before they've even started for not doing very much is a novel experience. Anyone with a dark skin is immediately considered suspect. Um, certainly they're trying to prevent any sort of demonstration, however peaceful, from taking place inside the arena. Um, we've also been told to clear off. So, I mean, this is a new experience, I have to say, and thoroughly unpleasant. Do you see what we do at the Bernie Sanders rally? Just like they're interrupting our rally, we're going to interrupt theirs. As the primaries progress, the mood in America is definitely darkening. And we discover that protesters are not the only people 
barred from Trump rallies. Now, as you may have noticed, I'm on this side of the fence and Donald Trump and the rally are on that side of the fence. Why? Because we have been banned from attending his rallies by his staff. Now, I've covered four presidential elections and that is the first time that's ever happened. Hundreds of Trump supporters are also stranded outside, such as the demand for tickets. They're left gazing towards the light, listening to the distant voice of their hero. Trump's campaign is not driven simply by bigotry and prejudice. In America's heartland, there is a deep anger, an anger captured in a video that Trump frequently refers to at his rallies, of workers being told that their jobs are to be shipped to Mexico. It became clear that the best way to stay competitive is to move production from our facility in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. The job situation in this country is worse than people recognize. We have 50 million Americans on food stamps. We are in a situation right now where job growth and wage growth is non-existent. We must remain committed to manufacturing the same high quality product. Trump is tapping into something very real. Think about this. Three quarters of Americans have not had a raise in four lie three pledges. To bar Muslims entering the US, to deport 11 million illegal immigrants, and to build a wall on America's southern border with Mexico. We're gonna do the wall, and by the way, who's gonna pay for the wall? Mexico's gonna pay for the wall. Trump's proposed wall has even led to a spat with the Pope. Una persona que pensa soltanto in fare muri, sia dove sia, e non fare ponti, non è cristiano. For a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful. If and when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS, which, as everyone knows, is ISIS's ultimate trophy. I can promise you that the Pope would have only wished and prayed that Donald Trump would have been president. Because it's true. It's true. In Florida, the key vote looms, and I've come here for a very specific reason. For decades, Florida has had political attention lavished on it by one presidential candidate after another. Why? Because this state can make or break a president. Not just because it's electorally important, but because of its Cuban-American community. Latinos make up 12% of American voters and are generally not fond of Trump. But having fled communism, Cuban Americans tend to be more conservative than other Hispanics. Hola, señoras, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué piensa usted de Donald Trump? Me hace falta un gobernador, un presidente fuerte como él. Un presidente fuerte. Sí. Pero Trump no ha estado muy simpático en confronto a los latinos, ¿no? Eh. Toda esa cosa del muro que va a construir y no se debe de hablar mal de nadie, pero Trump tiene un carácter que puede dominar esto. Así. Para que respeten el país. What do you guys think of Donald Trump? I don't like him at all. We are Cubans. We lost the ability to vote for anybody almost 60 years ago. So we value the privilege of being able to vote. Yeah. But for the first year, for the first time in my life, here in the U.S., and I've been a citizen for 40, 50 years, I may not vote for president. Because you don't like if, Trump. If and it's you don't Trump like and Hillary, I won't vote. So what do you think of Donald Trump? I don't like him. You don't like him? No, no, no. Why not? Because he has it against the Spanish people. Yeah. He's racist. He's racist. Well, one thing's certain, there's always a strong opinion when you talk about Donald Trump. Hatred of Trump and love of Trump 
an eco measure on this street. Like everyone else, Cuban Americans are split. But the outcome of the primary here in Florida will be crucial. Many believe this is the last chance to stop the Trump bandwagon. We are going to win and we are going to make America great again. I love you all. I'm in Florida on the campaign trail of billionaire presidential candidate Donald Trump, the man turning American politics on its head. We are going to make America great again. Florida isn't just vital for votes, it's also the location of Trump's second home, the luxurious 118-room Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach. You can't be on this property. Please stop coming in. This place literally reeks of money. This is a world of high hedges and incredible wealth and exclusivity. Couldn't really be any different to the kind of world that most of Trump's supporters live in. It doesn't seem to put them off. Today is what's known as Make or Break Tuesday, when Florida and five other states vote. While the media kill time outside Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, I headed off to meet with his former butler to see what insights I could glean into the Donald. No man's a hero to his valet, they say. What a wonderful shop. Welcome. Yeah, like a treasure trove. Oh, it is. It really is. Come Amazing. on in. Come on in. Look around. Anthony Senecal now runs an antique store. Does the Donald come in here to buy furniture? He does. He does. He does. This is very much his taste. Yes usually mirrors. And he likes mirrors. He loves mirrors. He, he's got 15 That clubs. doesn't surprise me entirely, I have to say. Oh, really? <laughs> what kind of mirrors does he like? Big ones. So what was it like working for him? Oh, he was incredible. Uh, he was absolutely incredible. One of the nicest men I've ever worked for. But Mr. Trump was demanding. And if you could meet his demands, you were fine. Mm -hmm. The whole world is shocked that Donald Trump might be president one day. I'm so surprised. Not. No, I'm not shocked. So you can imagine Donald Trump presiding over a state dinner. Oh, my gosh. Yes. With impeccable manners. I've seen him do it so many times. I've seen him do it so many times. Just he morphs into whatever you want him to be. But he's great. So what's the Oval Office, his inner White House, feel like, look like, run by him? It would be like a well-oiled machine. It would run so smoothly. There wouldn't be a lot of discussion. There would be a lot of commands. And do you think America could get used to him being in the White House? I think they damn well better. <laughs> Florida ought to be safe ground for Trump's opponent, local hero, Cuban-American Marco Rubio. But when the votes are counted, it's high drama on CNN. A huge win we project for Donald Trump in Florida. Donald Trump will win all 99, all 99 delegates. Winner take all in Florida. At his Mar-a-Lago estate, Trump learns he's also won four of the other five states up for grabs that day. Triumphant, he takes to the stage. I just want to say we're going to go forward and we're going to win. But more importantly, we're going to win for the country. We're going to win, 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 and we're not stopping. We're going to have great victories for our country. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And as he's savoring his victory in the mansion behind me, perhaps even the Donald himself didn't quite imagine that he'd get this far. Marco Rubio drops out of the race. Trump's only loss that day is to Senator John Kasich in his home state of Ohio. But realistically, just one man now stands any chance of catching Trump. Only two campaigns have a plausible path to the nomination. Ours and Donald Trump's. To British eyes, the campaign of Texan Senator Ted Cruz is scarcely less bizarre than Trump's. My qualifications for president of the United States are rather narrow. 
Is he or she godly? Does he or she love us? Can he or she do the job? And finally, would they kill a duck and put them in a pot and make them a good duck gumbo? This is a Cruz campaign ad. Ted Cruz is my man. He's godly. He loves us. He's the man for the job, and he will go duck hunting. But Cruz's campaign is no laughing matter either. We will utterly destroy ISIS. Cruz is, if anything, more of a hardline conservative than Trump. We will carpet bomb them into oblivion. I don't know if sand can glow in the dark, but we're going to find out. Yes, Leviticus 2013 calls for the death penalty for homosexuals. Last November, Ted Cruz shared a platform with this man. Chapter 1, verse 32, the Apostle Paul does say that homosexuals are worthy of death. His words, not mine. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A fundamentalist Christian, Cruz shook Swanson's hand. Bless you. Okay, how important is it for the President of the United States to fear God? And what does that mean to you? Any president who doesn't begin every day on his knees isn't fit to be commander-in-chief of this country. Amen. Amen. A spokesman for Cruz later disavowed Swanson's comments. But Cruz's evangelism should give him a massive advantage over the somewhat less godly Trump. Good job. Good job. The Donald has owned casinos and beauty pageants, been married three times, and is no Sunday school teacher, as these clips graphically show. You're not going to raise that fucking price, you understand? Listen, you motherfuckers, we're going to tax you 25%. We can't get a fucking school built in Brooklyn. We'll beat the shit out of them. Today we pray for Donald Trump. Yes. yes. We pray for his family. Yes. We pray for his... But the profane, womanizing Trump has undergone a remarkable transformation. Here we see him praying solemnly with faith leaders. He's attended church. Keen to win over evangelicals, he's presented himself as a defender of the faith. I'm a very good Christian. And, you know, they're chipping away at Christianity. And we're not going to let that happen anymore, folks. I'll tell you. His newfound religiosity hasn't always been that convincing. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse I, that means I, I a lot just, to you that you think about or cite? The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. But somehow it's worked. Trump is beating Cruz even amongst evangelicals, who represent such a key part of the Republican electorate. Religious firebrand Jerry Falwell offered surprising support on Fox News. Evangelicals are tired of being betrayed by politicians who promised the world over the last few decades. This time evangelicals are looking at different issues than they have in the past because they're trying to save the country. If we don't save the country, then abortion, traditional marriage, all those social issues are going to be a moot point. We've got to save the country first. And, we, and I believe, and many evangelicals, a majority of evangelicals believe that Donald Trump is best equipped to save the country. Okay, so who wants to say grace? Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Would you like to hold hands with Sissy as well? Faced with the whirlwind that is Donald Trump, Cruz is struggling to hold on even to his core vote. I'll tell you, with the evangelicals, they get it. They get it. They get me. They understand me. I'll be the best thing that ever happened to them. I mean that, 100%. And in Washington, Republican leaders are wrestling with the stark reality that the Trump bandwagon may be unstoppable. 
The Republicans are headed for a crack up and almost everybody knows it. My next stop is Washington, D.C. For Donald Trump, this city is the enemy, even if it might become home. These politicians that get elected by you and everybody else, and they go to Washington, and then they do a total fold all the time. They're always folding, because they're politicians. They're all talk, they're no action, they don't get the job done. They don't get it done. The establishment of the Republican Party is as hostile to Trump as he is to them. The man uh, is charting a course that will create, uh, uh, that will exacerbate America's decline in the world and will create, I think, civil unrest within our own borders. But isn't Trump the symptom of a system that is fundamentally broken? If I believed that Donald Trump had put forward even one coherent policy that would address those concerns, I might agree that he, he's not a function of it. He, he, is, he is no more a function of that system than pus is a function of infection. Now, Donald Trump tells us that he is very, very smart. Mitt Romney was the last Republican candidate. I'm afraid that when it comes to foreign policy, he is very, very not smart. Trump had backed his failed campaign against Obama, but Romney launched a visceral personal attack. Think of Donald Trump's personal qualities. The bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny, the absurd third grade theatrics. But look, <laughs> Mitt is a failed candidate. He failed. He failed horribly. The third debate. <laughs> You can see how loyal he is. He was begging for my endorsement. I could have said, Mitt, drop to your knees. He would have dropped to his knees. He was begging. The attack on Trump by the Republican establishment has backfired. I think what's interesting is how strategically foolish that was. I mean, it's almost like they don't see the political landscape as it really is. How so much of it is a battle of folks who feel like they've been left out of the process up against the establishment. So when the establishment attacks Trump, it's good for him. He's basically saying, bring it on. Keep attacking me. That's the best thing for me. It's beautiful. Attack, attack, attack. Because you're an idiot. The recent victories in Florida and other states mean that Trump is almost certain to arrive at the Republican convention in Cleveland with the most votes. But it's quite likely he won't have an overall majority. If Donald Trump gets to the primary and does not have 1,237 delegates in his pocket, it is a contested convention. That would mean that more of the delegates there wanted someone else. If those delegates coalesce around some other candidate, then Donald Trump does not win the nomination. Normally, the party convention is a coronation. This year, perhaps not. Uh, he has so much opposition concentrated in those with real power in the Republican Party, those who control the convention rules, for example, that he has to be very wary. It is entirely possible that they will decide that they can destroy the Republican Party in order to save it. In the current atmosphere, if the Republican leadership were to manipulate the convention to deprive Trump of the candidacy, this will be a high-risk strategy. The Trump delegates, they'll almost certainly protest within the convention and then I assume walk out. And what will they walk out to? Tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of protesters who gathered in Cleveland, both pro-Trump and anti-Trump. It's no accident that the city of Cleveland has just increased dramatically their allocation for riot gear. Wait. 
You may be placed under arrest. If Donald Trump goes into that convention having the most delegates, and he is not the nominee, I think you're going to see an uprising in this country in a way that we haven't seen for a very long time. This is a very, very aggressive, very, very noisy, loud majority. Trump is playing with fire. There's a lot under the surface here. Most politicians are fearful of tapping it and saying, I'm going to ride that. I'm going to unleash that, and I can harness it and control it. <laughs> but Trump doesn't seem to be hesitant about some of those things. If we're, you know, a hundred short, I don't think you can say that we don't get it automatically. I think it would be, I think you'd have riots. I think bad things would happen. I really do. I believe that. I wouldn't lead it, but I think bad things would happen. It's like, make me the nominee or else. Yes, this is what we're, this is, this is what we're stuck with. Afraid of the consequences of blocking Trump, the Republican leadership may well decide it has little option but to knuckle under and accept a Trump candidacy, which could leave just one person between him and the White House. Yes. Donald Trump, finally a candidate whose hair gets more attention than mine. Already it's showtime for Hillary v. Donald. The one person that Hillary doesn't want to run against, I will tell you this, is Donald Trump. If he emerges, I would love to debate him. Hillary Clinton was the single worst Secretary of State in the history of this country. When he embraces torture, that doesn't make him strong, it makes him wrong. It's word association, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> In a certain way, evil. But once upon a time, it was also very different when Trump and Hillary were chums in New York. He gave Hillary rave reviews on Fox News back in 2012. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've known her for years. I live in New York, she lives in New York, and I've known her and her husband for years, and I really like them both a lot. I think she really works hard, and I think she does a good job. He helped fund Hillary's successful bid for the Senate. Hillary and Bill Clinton went to the Donald's third wedding. What did you get him for his wedding? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was basically a Democrat before he was a Republican, and, um, he was, uh, you know, somebody that we all knew in New York, and he was supportive of Democrats. So, you know, now he seems to have taken another road. Clinton supporters are confident that Trump's rhetoric leaves him effectively unelectable in modern America. You cannot offend gay people, immigrants, African-American, women in this country, and then simply think that you're going to cobble together some kind of majority. It does not exist. We had uh, um, uh, Donald Trump on the other night. I don't know if you saw it. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> In a feisty performance on The Tonight Show, Hillary exudes confidence. And I was just wondering, mm. does, that, does he intimidate you, Donald Trump? No. <laughs> <laughs> the assumption among the political elite is that Hillary is the clear favorite. But then so far, the political elite has been wrong at every turn. All these people who all said he'd never have a chance, he was a circus act, he's never gonna make it. Every time he said another thing which they thought was outlandish, oh, he's done, oh, he's, you know, he's finished, he only got stronger and stronger and stronger. Thanks, everybody. Hillary's vulnerabilities are manifold. She's got an enormous record to shoot at. Hillary Clinton will wanna try to push that she understands policy, that she understands what the country needs because she's been in government for so long. That's what we wanna get rid of. We don't want somebody who's going to go into the White House owing favors to lobbyists and to other people in their party. Is she crooked or what? Okay, give me a break. Is, is she crooked? I mean, how crooked is she? Hillary Clinton is deeply unpopular with large sections of the American population. 
And as he moves from the primaries into the presidential campaign, Trump may morph into a very different kind of candidate. We don't forget. We have long memories. <laughs> what all the candidates will have to do in some part is move to the middle. That's what they do in a general election. And I'm at 32. He absolutely will move to the center because Donald Trump's central belief is Donald Trump. And therefore, whatever will help Donald Trump get elected will be implemented. But this could be a very risky strategy. If he starts moving towards the center, let's say for an example, he said, you know, uh, I'm not going to deport everybody. Maybe I'll just give them legalization, but they'll never be able to vote. Guys like me, I won't show up to vote. I'll feel that he screwed me. One thing's for sure, it's going to be brutal. This will be a scorched earth campaign on both sides, but especially on Donald Trump's side. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. Donald Trump is running a cynical campaign of hate and fear for one reason, to get votes. It's gonna be a really pretty election campaign. It's going to be one of the dirtiest, nastiest, most horrible campaigns in all of American history. And that's saying something because we've had some horrible campaigns. Donald Trump has still to win the Republican nomination. And then there's the small matter of the presidential campaign itself. But it would be a foolish person Hello. who bet against him going all the way. Hello. To the White House, please. Let's be honest. Six months ago, the idea that Donald J. Trump would become the Republican nominee for the presidency of the United States of America would have seemed utterly ridiculous and absurd. But frankly, now anything is possible. So I'm trying to get in the mood for what promises to be a new age of bling. Nancy Reagan got in trouble for her garish redecoration of the White House. Heaven only knows what Donald Trump would do. I asked Trump's long-serving former butler. How would you describe his taste? Gold. He likes gold. And he's actually very good with it. Imagine uh, Donald Trump as president. Mm -hmm. How do you think the White House will look? Because, of course, every president gets, they get to refurbish a little bit, right? Oh, absolutely. And, th and it really needs it now. Uh, right. <laughs> because Obama's taste sucks. Trump would be the richest person to ever occupy the White House. He'll actually be downsizing if he becomes president, moving out of his palatial residences to this. Trump's already got most of the trappings that come with being president, including a large plane and a helicopter that he was delighted to show off on the Golf Channel. I got a brand new helicopter, we just put it in service. But if he gets to the White House, the American people will judge him not on interior decor, but whether he delivers on his promises. Many of Trump's core promises and policies have to do with immigration, keeping Muslims out, sending Mexicans back to Mexico. Now, the people who have to implement that work in buildings like this one. This is the Department of Homeland Security. But can they actually implement those promises or policies? Along the sprawling California-Mexico border, thousands of Mexican wetbacks or illegal entrants are sneaking into the United States. The, border guards, Harris, the mass deportation of illegal Mexican migrants has been tried before. President Eisenhower's infamous Operation Wetback in the 1950s proved expensive and ineffective. Would it be any different this time? First, let's look at the cost. Most estimates are that it would cost somewhere around $140 billion uh, over a several-year period to find and deport all those who are in this country unlawfully. 
about twice um, the entire annual budget of the Department of Homeland Security. Um, in some states, uh, the, the, the population of their workforce that's undocumented is approaching 10%. What happens when all of a sudden one in every 10 workers within the state is gone? A bar on Muslims entering the country could be equally difficult to enforce. I don't think it would work. You just can't ban a particular religious group from entering the United States. Are they going to have lines of passengers coming in from overseas and they're going to say, what's your religion? Okay, Muslims over here. Okay, Hindus over here, Baha'i over. It's just not going to work. He would be alienating basically one-fifth of the world's population. He would be stigmatizing millions of American Muslims. And he'd be sending a message that would be devastating to American foreign policy and interests worldwide. Handling the fallout from that would be the job of America's diplomats. Now that very drab slab of a building behind me is in fact the US State Department, the American version of the Foreign Office. Tens of thousands of square feet of office space dedicated over decades to honing America's image and power around the world. Now just imagine that place and the President Trump. Let me tell you, Mexico is going to pay for the wall, right? Gonna happen, going to happen. They know it, I know it, we all know it. Strangely, the Mexicans don't seem terribly keen on Trump's idea. I declare, uh, I'm not going to pay for that fucking wall. He should pay for it. He's got the money. The Mexican government would never consider uh, paying for this wall. It is an absurd proposition, not only because in this day and age, it is better to build bridges to build uh, understanding between communities. But history has proven that building walls and isolating oneself is not the answer to meet the challenges we face. But there is one man who may not be so averse to a Trump presidency. It would be a kind of testosterone fest of braggadocio, of chest thumping. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get along like with people? The Russian strongman's feelings are reciprocated Trump surprisingly told Fox News. He's certainly a respected leader. He's actually liked in his country. The truth is that he is uh, strong and he's tough and he's making our president look very bad. I think Putin, my feeling is that he likes him. He, he likes him, he respects him because I think both of them embrace a particular form, I would say, of nationalism. That, and Putin can respond to that. Putin wants Russia to be respected and to be strong. And that's the argument of Trump, that we have to be respected, we have to be strong, we have to take care of our own first. In some ways, <laughs> I think Putin would be confounded to see a mirror image in certain qualities in Trump. And then they said, you know, he's killed reporters. And I don't like that, I'm totally against that. I, by the way, I hate some of these people, but I'd never kill them. I hate them. No, I think, no, these people, honestly, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I would never kill them. I would never do that. Ah, uh, let's see. No, I wouldn't. Donald Trump has said for the record that if elected to the White House, he would be more presidential than any of his predecessors, apart from one he granted, the man in the monument. That Donald Trump wants to follow in the footsteps of Abraham Lincoln, fellow Republican, the liberator of America's slaves, the victor of the Civil War, still sets the mind reeling. I would bring back waterboarding, and I'd bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. 
Trump may seek to batter the Democrats into submission with the same hyper-aggressive rhetoric that's winning him the primaries. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Or he may morph before our very eyes into a more mild-mannered mainstream politician, risking the wrath of the angry and the alienated who have supported him until now. I will bring our country together. We will be unified. We will be one. We will be happy again. Whether he's elected or not, Donald Trump makes you wonder whether this country, this democracy in this year, has changed beyond recognition.